Hello and welcome to the Final Frontiersman, a YouTube show about all things Trek. I'm Jeremy. And I'm Bill. And today we're going to be doing our review of Star Trek Strange New Worlds Episode 7 now. Seven. The Serene Squall. This was a really, really fun episode. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about what happened in this episode, Bill. Sure, just a real quick outline summary of um, what this episode was about. First, the Enterprise picks up a Dr. Aspen to rescue several stranded colonist ships. Uh, together, they head into what is called the Wild West of the Quadrant. It's an area that's patrolled by pirates and terrorized by one particular Corsair ship called the Serene Squall, the title of the episode. And although the Enterprise is the flagship of the Federation, Dr. Aspen warns them that the Serene Squall is not to be underestimated. So the crew finds themselves in a multitude of unexpected and dangerous situations as there is more going on behind the pirates' motives than meets the eye. Be prepared for one surprise after another in this fun and, at times, shocking episode. <laughs> I think shocking is an understatement. I was not prepared. Uh, once again, I was not prepared for the ending of this. Same. <laughs> these, these last couple episodes, the, the so. endings are just a sucker punch. Yes. But a, in a good way of like, oh, man. And yeah, this is going to be another episode where I think uh, we're going to rush to get to talk about the ending. Although this time it's not as meaty. As the last episode, that that really warrants a lot of really mauling over, but yeah. it's just well, if you've seen the episode, which I hope you have, because as you know, these are spoiler reviews that we do here. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, you're you're going to want to watch it first. You don't want us to spoil it, so by all means, close the window if you haven't seen it. Sure. Yeah, but come all back right. though. But come back. Yeah, right? yeah come back eventually. <laughs> all eventually. right. So as we go through our review, well, we're going to be pointing things out of specific interest. If it's something that we really enjoyed, something we really found was great, we're going to refer to that as a red alert. All right. If it's something that's foreshadowing, something that we want to look for in future episodes, something we think is going to come up again, that's going to be our yellow alert. And then our final one is if it's going to bend time and space as we know it and change canon and wreck mm -hmm everything and eh, maybe not we'll see we're going to refer to that as the black alerts all right maybe not wreck everything but then yeah. like throw things throw to things where it wasn't yeah it wasn't <laughs> it yes. depends how it goes down tread through the mycelial <laughs> network yeah. here um, yeah <laughs> all right so i just want to open up with if you're going to send me to jail i want to go to vulcan jail because mm. I want to sit there and paint and, <laughs> you know, write poetry. And, they, like, they seem to be having a really good time at, uh, maybe yeah. jail's a strong word, but their rehabilitation center. Rehabilitation colony, yeah. Yeah, so jail. So <laughs> Basically. Basically space Australia, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just... It just it was, it was interesting to see. You know, we I guess we've seen it before, alien jail and... That sort of thing, but I did like how how Vulcans did that. Yeah, it's interesting because they're not rehabilitating them to make them on the safe for society. They're rehabilitating them to be a way or a finish with their emotions yes. and back to that logical state of mind. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're going into the arts and all of these ways to focus the mind. So it's an interesting concept for an alien prison that fits the, the Vulcan society. You know? Right, yeah, and it just reminds you that Vulcans do struggle with their emotions. They do. They make mentions here or there, but they, they, it's, a, it's a really interesting way to show you, hey, these are the guys that are really struggling with it. So that was that was interesting for me. But uh, that, that's kind of related to what happens immediately thereafter as T'Pring is trying to connect with Spock's human emotions so she calls him and informs him that she has been reading all of these earth sex guides basically <laughs> and learning <laughs> all the ins and outs of uh, human pleasure to yes. try to appeal to spock's human side and his reaction was 
quite priceless in a Vulcan way. Right. And I almost thought, thought this right here. I was going to call this a yellow alert, but I, I, I don't mm-hmm. think I'm going to. I think it's just too obvious. Um, it's just watching Spock grow has been yeah. really fascinating to me. You know, and I've, I've caught from some people that, you know, Spock in this particular series is not doing doing a good job because he's too emotion. He's, his emotions are all over the place. Well, of course he is. He's a young, he's a young Vulcan. He's still young. Yeah. He's still young and he's and half human and half human. I think a lot of people, you know, tear me up in the comments, but I think a lot of Trekkies forget that Spock is half human. Yeah, so anytime you see him slip up, it's his human side. That's just the way he is. Yeah, but, he's, uh, he was born with it. He was raised with a human mother. He was. And for all we may see as Strange New Worlds goes on season after season, we may see what hardens him into the much more Vulcan appearance that we get in most of the original series. Absolutely. But I, I think it's a... it. The way they're portraying him, I really think it's a nice natural flow from the cage where you see him even smiling. So the yes. cage takes place before, long before this. Um, and you see, clearly they didn't really know how Vulcans were going to act <laughs> at the time for that unaired right. pilot. But it helps to make that make sense. You know, it helps to make it fit into canon, which is a very loaded term these days, but it it helps to make it a natural progression. Look how he was, what, five years ago, however many years ago it was with the cage. Uh, He's still smiling, even as a Vulcan, when he sees something that just grabs his attention. Now he's a bit more stoic, but he still is struggling with holding those emotions in. So I to me, I think it, it it's a nice callback in accepting what we see of him in the cage. Instead of being like, just don't look at that scene. Just don't watch it. Just don't watch <laughs> Forget it. that oh, happened. Like, Forget yeah. that happened. Forget that Pike doesn't we, care for women yeah. on the bridge and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, that never happened. I'm still... <laughs> scene of that there and i was going to mention that later in the episode where there's Uh a nice humorous moment but i was hoping that they would make mention of that where there might have been another situation they ran into in the past where there was some misogynistic world or maybe they had to host this misogynistic alien captain or whatever on the ship and that's the one who makes the comment against number one on the bridge Uh so then it's pike still doing that just kind of ribbing her so (laughs) i i would like to see that and um we'll we'll get to the comedic moment later but absolutely right uh do you have any other notes about the early early episode or no just i mean going back to spock going back to nurse chapel directly because of this again he he's come to her for relationship advice in the past and so he's going back Again, because now, of course, Tepring is, is she wants to talk about sex, baby, as the song goes. And so he doesn't really know how to respond to it. So that seems to be his human connection mm-hmm. on Nurse Chapel. So I, I think, again, and this is what we mentioned before, this is, again, progression of their relationship that's growing. And, again, hearkening back to what we know that Nurse Chapel has a crush on Spock, and it's very clear in this yes. episode. That very, it wasn't very clear, clear before. Yes. Very clear, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I wanted to also point out uh, something I really uh, I enjoyed watching Ortegas and Pike. Yeah. Their communication. Yeah. Uh, and I, uh, the note that I wrote is they have their own language, and they I do. love that. I absolutely yeah. adore seeing a connection between you know a captain and, and one of his crewmates like that. Uh, yeah. when they were t- discussing how close you want to get first day or second day, that sort of thing. Yeah. That was magnificent. That was and then absolutely... his, his answer, blind date. So yeah. Like, okay, <laughs> caution. Yeah, like, proceed perfect. with caution. Yeah. They, they, know, really they, they know each other. And again, you know I love Ortegas, and I'm still dying for her to have center stage one of these episodes. So again, hashtag Mortegas. <laughs> I, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for that day. And every glimpse we get of her, such as this scene, which is all like completely written out in my notes because I just loved it. Uh-huh. Um, it just 
it just makes me want more and i'm glad for everyone she she has a, a charisma she has a presence that even with the small scene she steals that moment so she, i love it she does and I, and I almost wonder if you know I, I don't believe this is going to be the case i think we're going to have a lot of ortega's episodes but you know, I almost wonder if occasionally she's going to just be. She is. A, I'm saying there's a possibility she could be that one character that's just gets the one or two liners that, and you think uh, uh, that's so really far, funny. So far, yeah. yeah um, I, I would almost um, kind of point out that it's, it's almost like Doctor Taana from Lower Decks. I think she's uh, hilarious. Yeah. But yeah. you don't see her a ton. She just pops up, says something really funny, and then they just get her off, you know. And I just she's a main character. She's yeah. a main supporting character. She's I a would main say. supporting and character. Yeah. Right now, that's that's sort of how Ortega does feel. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll see we'll how see that, where goes. that goes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yes. It's time. I hope. <laughs> I hope. Right. Um, and I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is this the first time we get to see a shot of the Jeffries tubes? You know, when they... Yes, this I believe this is the first return to those TOS Enterprise Jeffries tubes. But they don't look that different, but they no. look updated enough updated. to yeah. fit to fit the new aesthetic of the it's ship. So, believable, yes. So, yeah, yeah I, is... I liked it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you would imagine the Jeffries tubes wouldn't change very much if it's just a simple, I don't know, um, not remodeling. What what's the word I'm looking for? just a simple uh, it's a refit like, a refit kind of yeah a refit yeah, to, yeah. To do it. yeah so you would imagine them to have the same size and design basically and yeah they do and they look pretty much the same i liked it i it was fun seeing them crawl through mm -hmm. those jeffrey's too so All right i so, had fun with that yeah absolutely um i, I think the uh the counselor character and I, i'm terrible with names mm. uh, I, I like dr her. aspen dr. dr aspen looked fantastic i like her her character mm -hmm. design that, that was a lot yeah. of fun. That that was that was the thing when Doctor Aspen appeared on screen, mm -hmm. like looking at looking at the design, like that's a very interesting tattoo that they mm -hmm. have, and that's a the the was it the kind of rock thrash music that she or that <laughs> they're listening to in in the yes. quarters. Then later on, that outfit that they're wearing, uh, for the rest of the episode that skin type black almost almost um mechanical looking designs on it it's like this is a very odd voice but it's very striking but then what we learn about dr aspen later it all makes perfect sense why they have this very outrageous look to them and this very for for a counselor so it, it makes sense later. It, at first, it's like, wow, that's a very, very interesting design for the character. And then it's like, now it makes sense why there's that design. There's a little more leeway to explain why it look, <laughs> they look like that. It, it's so far, Strange New Worlds has done a really good job of fooling me. Yeah, like I had no into, no idea that she was going to turn out to be who or what she was. They, they, why? I mean, after I see it all put together, I'm like. Oh my God! Why? Yeah, you're right. It all makes yeah. sense now. Yeah, but yeah. it's just that's what. That's uh, too. Uh, I'll say that I had a couple of complaints mm -hmm. about Doctor Aspen as it was going on because you know, uh, the it, it's been kind of hyped up at least on social media for a while that they were going to be guest starring and this was a a lot of fans were looking forward to seeing the actor. Mm -hmm. And so there were a lot of things in the episode as it's happening that I wrote down as negatives. I'm like, oh, I'm just doing this pandering to this guest star that people want to say, oh, they're doing this. But then when you get the reveal later, which I'm kind of embarrassed to say, I didn't realize it was going to happen until far too late. Yes. Until far, far too late. But then when you look back on it, like you said, it's like, oh, of course, it was there <laughs> was from the beginning. <laughs> it was all right there. It was clearly painted in front of you. Yeah. So and like when it was building up, looking at it like that, like, oh, oh, no, this is, oh, no, 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 no. This is, this is going yeah. to be, this is going to be a, a betrayal. And then when I was done with my notes, like I said, I went back to, to read through it. And every negative point I had, 
suddenly made sense mm-hmm. because Dr. Aspen is da, 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 Captain Angel, the leader of the pirates. <laughs> Like, so of course they would know exactly what to do in this situation. Of course they would they would have all the right stuff to say because they are basically puppet mastering this whole incident. There were no colonists. There were no, no survivors to go after. It was just to get the Enterprise there because it was just right. to get Spock there. Yes. Which was the next big reveal. When, when they said that, when, the, when Captain Angel now... Not Dr. Aspen. When Captain Angel said that, like, we wanted you, Spock. Like, Mm -hmm. why? Why? (laughs) Why? (laughs) Like, why Spock? And then that made sense moments later. Right. So, yeah, yeah, it's just, it's a lot of just really fun, really good writing. And in my opinion, it's everything. It's just so calculated. But then I, I, then I want to call a question is like when the reveal starts happening and, Mm. The pirates. Which reveal? Because there's so uh, many fair reveals. point. With, <laughs> yeah. the, with the reveal that oh my god, yeah, she's she's the captain of of this mm. pirate ship. Um, now, uh, which I, I want to get into all that as well. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Watching Pike manipulate the pirates yeah. was a lot of fun. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Uh, but then later, when the uh, pirates start attacking the Enterprise. They're on the Enterprise. Uh, there's a couple things I want to point out. One of them is a light nitpick that, yeah. and, and I don't know how you could do it differently, but when we have a call to battle stations, it's like everyone at school gets under their desks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. But I guess yeah. on the bridge, what else would you could could you do? Yeah. But that is one thing that my even you know my wife called it out. She's like everybody just jumped under their desk and you know pulled yeah. out their phasers. I guess so. I, I just kind of like. I felt like there could have been, there's, should be a little bit more for a battle station. I in what I don't know. Well, I that that particular point didn't really get to me because I figure the bridge is about to be boarded, so they're going to want to have as much cover as possible mm-hmm. uh, because they they're going to be assaulted from multiple directions where they were coming in from um, different directions. It wasn't just uh, even the right. one. Yeah. The one lift, that, there was a, a second door, I think it was, that they came through, too. Mm-hmm. So it seemed like two different angles. So you want to barricade yourself against that. The My nitpick related to that, which, again, I brushed off easily later, because, as I said, there's flaws in everything of Star Trek, uh, every series in that. So if I'm being entertained... I can suspend my disbelief Absolutely. for a lot of things, but how easily the ship got boarded and taken over was was my <laughs> my nitpick because you would think, yeah. oh, wouldn't they be rushing in point. there? But at the same time, had they not done that, we wouldn't have gone this episode. So Absolutely. it's it's one of those things where like it happens because it has to happen. Yeah, it story, happens yeah. at the speed of plot, you know, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and at the necessary of plot and that sort of thing. And so, I get that. When it happened, I'm like, really? And then the more I'm watching, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll go with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, also, during the whole the boarding scene, uh, Nurse Chapel, she's kind of off on her own and gets... Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, she's trying to manipulate things around the ship, do it, mm-hmm. being good. And I noticed something when she gets captured. And mm-hmm. this is going to be my first yellow alert for this. Mm-hmm. Like, when she throws her hands up... Um, you see she has tattoos? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, yeah. I don't know if that's the actress's personal tattoos. Same, same, or same, same, yeah. are we going to learn something more about these tattoos later? Because they were clearly in frame. Very clear. Hands Very up. Clear, yeah. And it's almost like they can't. Come on. Mistakes happen. Yeah. But yeah. come on. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Well, um, it, that's that's a really good point. Yeah, that deserves a yellow alert because it could be the actresses. I didn't look into that. In fact, I, I, I'm glad you mentioned that, but I didn't even bother look into that. But um, yeah, it could represent something we're going to learn about later. That's why they made it so prominent on mm-hmm. screen. So I wonder. Good point. Yeah, good yellow alert. Yeah, absolutely. And oh, uh, I I just I I would like to also capitalize on this moment can i get a red alert on on this here to just something i thought was awesome Uh um since we're talking about the bridge fight 
and the whole boarding and that. I really love Spock's fight on the bridge, just nerve pinching <laughs> in a row, going down, flip, pin, flip. Yes, I, it was like yes. a perfect Spock hand to hand combat right. scene, throwing, like, throwing like, people like rag throwing dolls. people, rolling it, <laughs> grabbing with a pinch, knock them down, go to the next one. Like I love mm-hmm. that. I thought it was this good. is a really good fight. It, it's. Yeah. It's the next best thing to to locking your fists together and clubbing people. It, it right, so yeah. Good, yeah. I've referred to the, as that as the hammer of the gods as throughout the, <laughs> the throughout the Star gods. Trek. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just one one strike and you're even they they smite you with that one strike. But uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, that's absurd. You kind of have to get away from that. But that you're right. This is the next best thing. It's believable. <laughs> It's very it, it, believable. It's fully, for, very believable. Spock, yeah. So, absolutely. I I want to jump back to to now Pike and the crew on the pirate ship being captured. Like you said, they're manipulating yes the the pirates there, which was fun. That was extremely, and I I've heard a lot of people complain about. It. And while while I was watching, I could hear those complaints in the ether of the void of the internet coming out i know exactly what they're saying but again it's something that didn't bother me it was campy it was 1960s original series star trek campy yes and that's i think that's exactly what this episode is about that and that's one of the things i love about strange new worlds it embraces that tos feel with a modern paint job on it Yes, so very much so. When I think of TOS, I think of all these campy moments, these campy situations that by the time Deep Space Nine rolled around, it was few and far between. Yes. Which is why, why an episode like um, Trials and Tribulations uh, stands out so well in Deep Space <laughs> yeah. Nine mm-hmm. because they revert back to this campy 60s style. But Strange New World is embracing that because it's part of that era. And so I thought as silly and campy as how easily Pike is manipulating these pirates was, I think it was completely on par with the tone the show was trying to set. I agree. Uh, Absolutely. I agree. You know, this, this is the original. It's everything about this. Uh, I mentioned a previous episode, the the outfits with the, the metallics, the metallic yeah. fabrics, the, the the campiness. It looks good. Uh, it, it looks right. Yeah, you see a Jeffrey's tube, and immediately though it's updated, I know exactly what I'm looking at. It's yeah, it, they have done s- such a good job of remaking the original. Yeah, and I know there's a lot of complaints of. Like, well, why does it look so futuristic compared to TOS? And and I mean that that's just to me. And again, we I, I want to keep this channel yeah. positive. I don't, Absolutely. I don't want to attack other opinions. I mean that's no. valid, but but it's not like in the sixties, like almost sixty years ago, they thought, how can we make this starship look as cheap as possible? Right. No, it's, they yeah. were building it to what they can afford to do right. at the Budget. height of their technology. That's 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 it. Budget. What did the Klingons yeah. change from TOS to TNG? Budget. Budget. <laughs> <Yeah>. It <laughs> just we happens. can make it look better now. <laughs> absolutely. We uh, I would absolutely. not. I don't think Strange New Worlds would be successful if they tried to make a cardboard bridge for the yeah. Enterprise. Yeah. I mean, it, it would be like, yes, it's exactly what it looks like, but it would not be believable no. with where modern filmmaking technology is. No. And there would be no reason to lower the quality of the filmmaking for that. Like so that's something I can overlook because yes. Gene Roddenberry is like, I want this ship to look like it should fall apart if it gets wet. That that <laughs> clearly was not his intent. He wanted to make a futuristic starship where yes. and we mentioned uh, somewhere in one of our other videos, like the it's never about the details in Star Trek. It's never about the technicalities. It's about the message, about yes. the story, about the mm-hmm. plot, about the people. That's yes. the main thing. If you're focused too much 
on the little detail like that light was a little more fuchsia in the old <laughs> series you're missing the point of what yeah. star trek's about it's fun to like that stuff i mean myself as a role player as a person who played star trek in my friend's backyard rolling around pretending we're on bridges exactly. and having battles and that like reading the manuals hang stacks of the book that stuff is fun to me i love that stuff but i know that's not the core of the series and i can't strike strange new worlds for it, having any of that updated so right no. sorry i'm off my, I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> we need a soapbox alert actually yeah <laughs> yeah soapbox <laughs> alert <laughs> It, it should just be like a whiny person go, Mrah! <laughs> exactly. Someone crying, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, so, apologies. Apologies. Sorry, it happens. So uh, then we get later on. I mean, are we prepared to talk about the the end, like the reveal? Yeah, might as well, because I could jump back to a couple of these other points because it 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 still. Um, relate somewhat to reveal or i will do one more red alert if okay. i may, before we All get right, into the reveal i'm i know i don't want to talk too long but but again the last red alert was i love the triumphant return of pike and gang on the serene squall having taken over the ship <laughs> chasing <Taking> over <laughs> yeah, chasing <laughs> captain angel out of pike's captain's chair with this boldness they win the day, and then you see, oh, the curtains pulled back. <laughs> they haven't really completed <laughs> taking over the ship yet. They, they jumped the gun a little bit, and the pirates are right outside the door trying to get trying in. To like, get hurry up, get us out of here. Yes. So it, yeah. I thought, first it was like, wow, that was a big jump cut. But again, oh, okay, cheesy, corny, on campy. That's kind of what they're getting to. But then that little comedic bit. Uh, like we, we actually didn't finish <laughs> yeah, not the entirely show. right get us out of here yeah not entirely. we just locked ourselves in the bridge yeah but right. yeah the, i love that scene that, that was, was a, that a was a lot of fun scene, yeah. yeah okay the whole episode was fun yeah the whole episode was fun that was again calling back to the campiness uh, yeah and it, it should it's, be it's it's okay to have fun people yeah That's what and I'm how talking. good <laughs> did pike look at a steering wheel, yeah. like an actual <laughs> will on a pirate ship. It has an actual right. ship's will to sure. control it. I loved yeah. it. Loved it. Yeah, loved it, it is. It, that's when I try to tell people, guys, it's that's, it, my, my mini soapbox is it is okay to have a little bit of fun in Star Trek. Just do it. Have yeah. fun. Have a little bit of fun. That's why we have tribbles. That's right. Know? And tribulations. <laughs> and tribulations. But. All right, all right, Jeremy, I anyway. apologize. Take us there. Take us to the promised so, land. Take, yeah, us, take it, us to heaven. We find out why we need Spock, or what, what the whole thing was going on with Spock, with this, this mm -hmm. prisoner that they had. They was wanting to do an exchange. And when we found out who that was, you if you had told me prior, <laughs> I would have laughed yeah. at you. I was like, nah. Yeah. No, nah, they ain't touching that one. They ain't touching they that one because, uh, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, let me get, I'm going to get a soapbox alert right now. <laughs> because when people talk about um, one of my things, my counterpoints to Discovery is Spock never had a sister. Mm. Well, do you remember his brother? Well, Spock never had a brother either. Well, you didn't watch him as much Star Trek as you as you think you did. <laughs> He just never mentioned it because nobody asked. Nobody asked. <laughs> and that's what he says in Star Trek Five. No one asked. Exactly. Yeah, nobody asked. And nobody, I mean, it was just illegal to talk about his sister. So, hey, you, yeah. know, you know, how many other they, they siblings? They found a way around that. Yeah. They did. They, they, but, they did. So, but we found out it's Cybok of all Cybok. people. <laughs> Cybok. And Jeremy, <laughs> this has to be an alert. Uh, There's no way Cybok appears on screen without this being yeah, an alert. Absolutely. Um, this so, is... Yeah, I, I'm, I loved it. I'm calling it my, one of my red alerts here. Um, yeah. Is it going I, to change canon? We don't know, I but it don't looks think like... So. But it looks like they're shaping him up to be something bigger than just a cameo. Oh, absolutely. Yes. So... Having Cybok, this throwaway character, literally a throwaway character, that I believe even Gene Roddenberry stated later that, oh, he's not canon, uh, even though yeah. clearly, well, everyone's taken it as canon. But having this throwaway character not only come back, yes, but 
quite possibly be a villain or the villain of this season or the future, whatever term the villain may be. It might, it's probably not going to be as yeah. cut and dry. But having him go from this literal outcast of both an in-world character and an out-of-world meta character and right. having him be a linchpin for this series if that's what it turns out to be is this a yellow alert is this a red alert is this a I, black I, I, alert? I, don't, I, don't I really don't know, don't know. I <laughs> was not I prepared for this <laughs> yeah, it's a, we far from it we were not prepared for cyborg no okay. no no, the, no 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 the world no. can't prepare you for cyborg no no not at all but i i will say that when the camera went to the the Vulcan colony, the the rehab colony, and was panning, and Spock had the voiceover, and thinking like, it has to be someone we know. Yes, clearly they wouldn't have this. It has to be someone we know. And what Vulcan do we? And it clicked in me like no, <laughs> and like right. my jaw was hanging open. And I told you, I told you before when I sent you a message. It like my mouth is open, like no, 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 no. <laughs> and like the camera keeps panning and going in, like right. no, 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 no. It can't be Cyborg. It can't be. Right. And then you see him there, and still I have goosebumps. Mm -hmm. Still and. It's not that I like Cyborg, but I just like yeah. what this represents. Yeah, I that like... was reaching. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's reaching. I mean that that was that was a deep cut there. I, I, like, I agree, and I'm, I'm with yeah. you. It's not that I particularly enjoy the Cyborg character. Yeah. yeah, but wow, I was not prepared for them to pull pull him out. So, but I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of havoc he's going to create yeah. and that sort of thing. And even if he is just a a random villain, like, oh, no, it's the Klingons. Oh, no, yeah. it's the Rhyme. Oh, no, it's Cybok. Oh, no, yeah. it's Harry Mudd. <laughs> you and know, like... Find out why Spock was forbidden for connecting with him. Yeah. Like, find out exactly what those details were. Well, we already know he's kind of dangerous by Vulcan terms because he's rejecting logic. But yes. still... Maybe we'll get some more details of why Spock's like, maybe I shouldn't mention this to the next captain. <laughs> maybe I <laughs> Probably should. not. Yeah, I'll just, just, just let myself here. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, fun episode. I had a really good time good. watching it. Um, yeah. I don't really have any closing thoughts other than that because, wow, I'm still no. recovering from that. So <laughs> Recovering from Cyborg. I went back and watched Star Trek V the next day afterwards just to to brush up <laughs> on everything that was cyborg it, it popped up in my feed like two weeks ago i'm like uh -huh. nah, i'm not gonna watch star trek 5 I, I think i remember it well enough but then this episode happened yeah. like yeah i'm going back and watching star yeah, trek i think i'm now because, going to do the yeah. same just to know what i'm know what i'm getting into so yeah but fun episode definitely <laughs> fun and does. great deep cut reveal at the end i was so happy Absolutely. I and mean, this is what I I want from this series. Mm -hmm. I want to be entertained. I want to be made happy with each episode. And so far, seven for seven, amazing. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, we really Love appreciate it. you watching. Please feel free to reach out to us, comment, yeah, yeah, like the video, all that fun stuff. We want to hear from you and answer yeah. questions. If you guys have, want to ask us anything, you can feel free to reach out to us here or on our social media social media you can find us on twitter instagram at the final fm all right guys and um until our next episode live long and prosper peace and long life